If you're wondering if the brand new GoPro Hero 10 Black will meet your content creation needs, or do you need to step up to the Sony ZV-E10? We've got you covered. Let's take a Jam Life Tech Adventure. Well guys, the tech release season is in full swing. We have now seen the release of the iPhone 13 Pro and the long awaited GoPro Hero 10 Black, which we have been testing over a week or so now. And I'm happy to report this is a great win for GoPro. The new slow motion frame rates are good in 4K, which we love, but it's the new GP2 processor, which is the real win. It seems that GoPro have fixed the touchscreen issue the front screen has a lot less latency. It just feels like it should now. A big call from me here right now, but it's my favorite action camera on the market once again. But what we're about here on this channel is vlogging and content creation. And so, you know, we just had to put it up against the Sony ZV-E10 to see if you really need to go for that camera or should you just buy the GoPro this year. But let's first discuss the elephant in the room here and that's the price. GoPro 499, Sony ZV-E10, easily over a thousand dollars with a couple of good lenses. So the real question is, will the GoPro do the job for you? After all, it's an action camera or do you need to spend twice the money on the Sony? So we're going to look at this how we normally do in a kind of real world situation for vloggers. With testing like we do here on this channel, designed for vloggers. After that, we'll come back and look at the advantages of each camera and then offer our opinion. Before we get into it, a couple of things. The lenses used on the Sony ZV-E10 were the Sony 10 to 18 F4 and for bokeh and low light test, I now own the Sigma 16 f1.4. Sony's Catalyst Browse was used to stabilize the ZV-E10 in post and Hypersmooth 4.0 was used for the GoPro. So off we go down to beautiful Maroubra Beach here in Sydney. Enjoy. First of all, guys, I wanted to show you my trek down to Maroubra Beach with the incredible Insta360 Go2. This tiny little camera in time shift mode. Recommendation for you, don't use the camera in time shift mode on your cap, otherwise you get those jerky head movements. Make sure you use the pendant underneath your t-shirt and clip it to that. Fine for normal video though on your cap, in fact better. But just purchased this camera, using it a lot, and what did you just see how awesome the footage is? Okay, this is a mic check in front of the camera with the Sony ZV-E10. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. And this is a mic check from behind the camera. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. This is a mic check from in front of the camera with the GoPro Hero 10. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Okay, this is a mic check from behind the camera on the new GoPro Hero 10. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. So no surprises there with the internal mic tests. Here's a time-lapse test on both cameras and they're both performing very, very well here. And here is a slow motion test. Now GoPro has improved their 4K slow motion. You can get 120 at 4K um, versus the 1080p 120 of the Sony ZV-E10. You can really see the difference in resolution in slow motion here. A great feature for the new GoPro Hero 10 Black. So here's the first of the stabilization test, the handheld a tripod test, GoPro using Hypersmooth 4.0 and Sony using Catalyst Browse. So 
slow pan test here. You can see that awesome autofocus test from the Sony there from the rock to the background. You can also see that Hyper Smooth and Horizon Lock is outperforming Catalyst Browse here. And then we go to a fast pan test here, just quickly to see how we go with a fast movement. And also go mode, which is just moving the camera around very, very quickly just to see how everything's handled there. And now we come to a walking stabilization test on pretty uneven ground here. And it's very interesting that in Catalyst Browse, I had to crop in quite a bit to get rid of the shake. GoPro just performing so well here with Hypersmooth and Horizon Lock. It's just too awesome. And here's a running test. Look, once again, Catalyst Browse needed a lot of crop. It's handling it, but the crop is significant. And the Hypersmooth 4.0, oh geez, it's really good, guys. And lastly, for stabilization, what we're all after is a good stable walking vlog. You can see that both performing quite well, but had to crop in once again quite a bit on Catalyst Browse. Here's something that GoPro just can't do. It's bokeh on the Sony ZV-E10. And here's a low light test. So we're going for an ISO 100 up to ISO 800. Of course, always the Sony is going to win this with interchangeable lenses. And also that APS-C sensor, it's so much bigger than the GoPros. It's always going to win a low light test. And one of the main reasons for getting your hands on a Sony ZV-E10. I mean, the ZV-E10 had usable footage at 100. There is so much choice for vloggers again this year, right? I really do believe more than ever before we have a couple of great vlogging cameras. So let's look at the Sony ZV-E10 first to see its advantages. Firstly, where the Sony wins again is in low light. The GoPro has improved here slightly, but was never going to win against the APS-C sensor and interchangeable lenses. And the Sigma does such a great job. Next, blurred background or bokeh achieved on the Sony. This is something you cannot achieve on the GoPro and depth of field is much loved by many vloggers and for some it's a deal breaker. Next the large flip screen, it really does help you frame your shot properly get focus and correct exposure. Next, the pro features of the ZV-E10. The Sony really does let you be as automatic as you want or as manual as you want. If you're a professional or amateur, you really do have the best of both worlds on this camera. Next, this fast array of lenses you can use with the ZV-E10 does make for a world of different focal lengths, sharpness, and as we discussed earlier, that depth of field. Lastly for me, and I'm sure there are more, but it's audio quality. The ZV-E10, like the ZV-1's built-in mic, is a far superior option for recording. Down there at the beach has to be the worst conditions, but the wind noise was right down and my voice was very plainly well heard. Look, I know you can use external mics on both cameras and this would properly fix the issue for the GoPro. But for any reason, if you forgot your external mic, it's great to have good usable audio coming from the Sony. But the GoPro in many circumstances is unusable. Okay, so what about the GoPro? Where do its advantages lie? Well, you have to say firstly the price. This camera can be well under half the price of the Sony with a couple of good lenses. And this is a good camera, especially this year. So it's something to really consider. I mean, it's under half the price, right? Next, size, weight, and durability. Many vloggers want to be discreet. And with the GoPro, you really can. It's light, small, and would take a lot more punishment from drops and spills than the Sony can. After all, it's an action camera, right? 
but that feature alone is what some vloggers will really like. So next is stabilization. The GoPro is going to just blitz here. It's really amazing. Hypersmooth 4.0 together with the horizon lock is just perfect. One thing that is worth mentioning, low light will catch you out with electronic stabilization like the GoPros. In a word, it will not work in low light. Whereas Catalyst Browse works with gyroscopic data from the camera, so does work in low light. I'm just putting it out there, okay? And the last advantage I want to point out is frame rates and resolution. Being able to shoot in 5K 30 and four times slow motion in 4K 120 is a real advantage for the GoPro, making for more detailed slow motion and video. To sum this one up, I love the new GoPro. They really nailed it this year and fixed everything that we were concerned about on the Hero 9. If you're thinking seriously about this camera, then just go and buy the Hero 10 Black. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And we definitely won't be returning it, that's for sure. For me, I really do need what the Sony has to offer. For my content creation, the depth of field, low light capabilities, and huge range of Sony lenses and pro features make it the better choice for a content creator's needs. To tell you the truth, I'm really happy to have both. If you have the means, it's the perfect content creator's toolkit. If you can only afford the GoPro, then you have a really awesome vlogging camera option in the Hero 10 Black. And most would say it's all they need to vlog with. But we want to hear from you. Have you or are you going to buy either the GoPro Hero 10 Black or the Sony Xevi E10? And why? Leave a comment below. We always love to hear from you. And that's it for today's video. Hope it helped you out. Please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, hit the like button, all that good stuff and we'll see you on the next Jam Life Tech Adventure.